Hello, in this presentation, we're going to work some test type problems, smaller type problems that could be in a multiple choice type format. So we're going to start off here with this problem. Note that a longer type of problem like this might be useful to actually read the last sentence first, might save some time so we know what it's going to ask for at the end. And then when, when we read through it, it's good to just plot down those numbers that we can then use at a later point. So we're going to say that to maintain a 10,000, I'm reading this last sentence. To maintain the 10,000 required balance during June, the company must do what? So we can see we're talking about a bank account. I see a bank account here. We want to retain a $10,000 balance. So it sounds like we, we need to basically measure the activity in the bank account. So as we read through it, I'm going to list out kind of the data and punch that into Excel so we might be able to uh, record that information. So company, so I'm going to read it from the top now. <laughs> Company is prepared a cash budget for June. Cash budget for June. The company has 11,300 cash at the beginning. So I'm just going to say, all right, beginning cash. And I'm just going to say beginning balance. We're talking about the cash account. So we'll just say the beginning started off with 11,300. 11,300 and anticipates 30,007 in cash receipts. So I'm just going to say, all right, receipts. We think we're going to pull in another 30,700 cash receipts. And 30, 35,900 in disbursements. So we're going to have to pay out. This is a budget, of course. Disbursements and receipts. We're estimating. I'm just going to abbreviate. We're going to say 35. I'll make it a, I'll make it a negative. Negative 35,900. And you'll note that I, I underline that with the underline here already. That cell's been underlined. Okay. And let's see what else we have. The company has has an agreement with the bank to maintain a minimum balance. So I'm just going to note that over here, minimum balance. We want a minimum balance in our checking account of 10,000. That's like our cushion. We don't want to go below there. We're told our bank, hey, if we go below 10, then give us an automatic loan because we need 10 in there at any given time in case of emergency. We currently have a loan to the bank of uh, May 31st, 15,000. All right, so I'm just going to note that on the side. So now we need to read that last sentence again. To maintain the 10,000 required balance during June, the company must do what? Well, let's see where we are at the ending balance as of now. We said that we, I'm just going to sum these up. We had a beginning balance of 11.3 plus receipts of 37. That's what we think is going to happen, at least in disbursements of 35.9. So if we sum that up equals the sum of, uh, I'm going to say this plus this minus this. That's the sum of these, last one being a negative number. We say enter, uh, we get the 6,001. Of course, all we did was in a calculator say 11,3 plus 30,007 minus the 35,9 gives us the 6,1. Now we see that that is below 10,000, right? That's below 10,000. That's our minimum balance. So we need a minimum of 10,000. So what's the bank going to do? It's going to increase our loan then. So I'm going to underline this and I'm going to say we need then a loan equaling 10,000 minus what's currently in there, the 6-1, that means we need another 3-9. So what's going to happen? What's going to be, you know, in the answers when we look at a multiple choice question? We're going to have to get a loan. We're going to have to increase the loan for this 3-9. What's that going to do to our total loan? Because the current loan balance happens to be this 15. So that will increase our balance to, it's going to increase it by the 3-9, and we currently have a balance of 15. So the answer key could say we need to increase the loan by 3.9. The answer key, uh, uh, another type of variation of this problem might say that, well, what's going to be the loan balance after uh, this month is over? And that would be 18.9. All right, we have the next one here. Once again, I'm going to try to read that last line and see if I can get some information before reading the entire thing. So the last line here says, starting here, Compute the projected sales expense to be reported on the selling expense budget for the manager for the month ended June 30th. So we're going to keep that in mind as we read through it. So I'm going to start from the top now. Company sells a product for $700. So unit price is going to be $700. I'll just log that in. Units sales for May. So we're going to say May. And I'm going to put a header here. May. And we'll say unit sales unit sales for may are going to be 400 and we just know we already know that we have this unit price so i'm going to put that down here and i'm going to say okay well the unit price is going to be down here and you could retype this in i know i'm formatting and formatting is half the half the issue whether you do it by hand or in excel 
So we're going to put it and try to put it in this kind of grid type format. So we're going to say, all right, well, unit sales are here. The unit price is here. So that's what we have for May so far. 400 and uh, sales are expected to increase uh, the prior year month by 3%. So we know that we're looking for, if we look in the answer, we're looking for June. So we have May here and then we have June. So we need to think about, okay, well, what's going to happen to June then based on this? So that's where we want to go. I'm going to format paint this and go here. And we know that the, the unit sales are going to increase by 3%. A couple ways we can calculate that. We're going to say that uh, unit sales are 400. So for May unit sales, we have 400. And it's going to increase by 3%. So we could say, okay, well, the increase is going to be 3%. I'm going to put 0.03. And I'm going to go back on that cell. We're going to go to the Home tab, Alignment. And just remember, if I add decimals, 3% is 0.03. If we, move this, if we move the decimal over, or we can make it a percent, 3%. And then if we multiply that out, we're going to say, all right, well, the increase then is 4,000 times 3%. It's going to increase by 12. So the increase is going to be by 12. So this is the increase... I'll say increase percent and this is actually the actual increase in dollars and that's going to be the 12. So note that we might do that a bit more quickly by saying all right well if it's 400 and it's going to increase by three percent instead of putting three percent we might just put 100 percent plus three percent is 1.03. So note we can do this a lot in one calculation this is worth noting by saying 1.03 103 percent of the original number means that it's going to go to 412 R you know rather than taking this 412 and saying what's the new sales going to be 400 plus 12 we can do that with one calculation by saying 400 times 1.03 103 percent that'll give us that 412 so if i did that over over